Hello everybody and welcome back to another Vegas Pro 16 tutorial. So before I get into the tutorial I'd just like to say thank you for the recent support on the channel. We've just hit 1400 subscribers and also the recent tutorials have been doing really well. So thank you for that if you have just subscribed recently I really do appreciate it. Now this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to do lower thirds. This was requested by one of you guys, so that comment will be on screen now. If you don't know what lower thirds are, they're basically a method where you can display extra information to the screen. As the name suggests, they're usually displayed on the bottom lower third of the screen. I might have a couple examples on screen now of where I found it used in other YouTube channels or other pieces of media like news and stuff like that. One of the things with lower thirds is that can be completely customizable. It's completely up to you what you want them to look like and how you want them to act and behave. The way I do them on my channel is kind of a bit differently. I don't really do them at the bottom lower third of the screen. You may have seen on this video already they would have popped up on the top left. I basically show my Instagram, my Facebook and my Twitter. And that's what a lot of YouTubers use them for. They use them to show their social media. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how I've made my lower thirds graphics. They're super easy to make and once you've made them once, you can easily import them in any video. And also if you do want to change anything, if you want to have different text, if you want to add images, anything like that, that's perfectly fine. It's up to you. It's your channel. It's your design. Go with whatever you want. I just want to go over a general gist of how I do it. Another thing I'd like to mention before starting the video, there is a lot of templates you can get out there for lower thirds. So if you do want to have a browse around YouTube and the internet for any templates that you may like, just do that. Type in lower thirds template and you'll get some of that pop up. I would highly recommend making your own though, with your own font and your own text and kind of make it your own. Because the more it is your own, the more branding you have attached to that, the more it does feel unique when people watch it. Right, so starting off, we've got a blank Vegas file here. I'm going to right click here, I'm going to create a new track. For this example, I'm going to make a little lower thirds for my Instagram. So to start off, I want to insert some text. And I've got a standard font I always use when I ever do anything on my channel. You may have seen it already. To change the font, just make sure you've got all your text selected. Find the font. Select it. So there we go, that's the font I always use. If you don't know how to download your own fonts, you can simply type in fonts on Google, Google Fonts, it'll show up there, you can download any font you want. They're super easy to install. If people want it, I may make another tutorial showing how to download fonts. If you do want that, tell me in the comments below and I'll make it as soon as I can. So like I said, this one's going to be for my Instagram, so I'm just going to type here, my Instagram. And then for now, I'm just going to close this down. I'm going to create another text media box. So right click, insert text media. We're going to choose that same font. And then I'm going to type in my Instagram name. Now unfortunately this font doesn't include an at symbol. Whenever I try to type it, it just does that. So I'm just going to leave that out. I'm just going to do PK dot Robert dot Watkin. As you can see, it is actually going outside the borders of the screen. So if you just select all the text using Control A, and then you can just change the scale of it here. So I'm going to put it like 24, that should do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new video track here. I'm going to put my text media just on these different layers just to make things a bit easier. It also means I'll be able to see them at the same time. Now they are both on screen there, but we do need to do some adjustments, some crops. I'm going to zoom in on the timeline just to make things a bit easier. And now using the event pan and crop, I'm just going to start with the Instagram. I'm going to scale it. So the text is a little bit smaller and then using my arrow keys I can more fine tunely move the crop box. I'm just going to move it down and I'm going to say about here for now. It doesn't look that great at the moment but this is just so the Instagram text is a little bit higher and then I'm going to move on to the actual Instagram name and I'm going to move that text a little bit lower. So yeah, clicking on the Instagram name text, I'm going to click the crop here and I'm going to move using the up arrow key just to get it a bit lower on screen. There we go. Now one of the things I don't like about this at the moment is I'd actually prefer my Instagram name to be larger than where it says my Instagram. Just so it kind of stands out a bit more as my Instagram name. So I'm going to go back into the property settings here. I'm going to select my text and I'm going to actually put it to 42, see how that looks. Okay, that, that's way nicer. I prefer that a lot more. I was going to make the Instagram text a bit smaller, but I think I'll just leave it at that size. I'm just going to adjust the cropping a bit more instead. Move it so it's there. I have got a bit of a cold right now guys, so if I don't sound up to par as usual, then you know why. You may know that my current lower thirds doesn't actually have an image associated with it, but I think I might as well update my lower thirds now, and I'm going to add an image to it. So on Google at the moment, I'm just going to search for Instagram logo, then I'm going to click images, and then if you click tools, 
colour and transparent. Once you've made the layer transparent, I'm also going to go to size and click larger than 1024 by 768. Just for an example, I want the quality to be decently high, so when I put it in whatever video project I'm going to put it in, it's going to be high quality. So there we go, we've got all the high quality images now. And I quite like this one here, it's 1100 by 1100. I'm going to click on that. And as you can see, this kind of checkered pattern, that shows that it is transparent in the background, which means when we put it in Vegas Pro, if we do have anything behind it, it is going to be transparent. You won't be able to tell this initially straight away when we're actually making the Lower Thirds logo, but when we add it to a different video, when we add it to the start of whatever video we want to put it in, you'll be able to see it then. So I'm just going to right click, I'm going to hit save image as. Now you can save it wherever you want, I'm just going to save it here as Instagram logo. As long as you remember where you've saved it, that's the important thing. So now I'm going to close down Google here. I'm going to click on my project media, import media, and then I'm basically going to look for where I've saved it. We can, hear, we can see here's the logo. I'm going to click open. And then I'm going to drag the logo onto a new track just below the text because I do want this in the background. Now I'm going to go into the pan and crop of the logo and you can see that the pan and crop square just like the images. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit match output aspect. That's going to change it to the same aspect ratio as the preview window. I'm going to make this a bit bigger so it's behind the text. You can see it doesn't look all that great at the moment. That's just because the text is kind of merging with the white parts of the image. So I'm going to go back to editing my text and I'm going to want to add a border to it. So if you just click outline, outline color, I'm going to make it black. Just by moving that down, putting that there. Now once again you can do any color you want, you can have your logo however you want. I'm just going through how I would make one. So now the colour is set to black, I'm going to increase the outline width a bit. I'm going to say there. And that looks pretty good for the My Instagram. I'm now going to close that and I'm going to do the same with the Instagram name. A bit more adjustment, I'm going to readjust the Instagram outline. I've just done a tiny bit more adjustment to the Instagram logo. I've moved it up a bit, I feel like that looks a little bit nicer. Now to make my Instagram name stand out a bit more, I'm also going to change its text. So I think I quite like it like that. So once you've created the design, the next step is going to be actually adding some animations to it. If you've already seen my lower thirds animations, it comes in from the side of the screen. So I'm going to show you how to do that now quickly and easily. So basically what I'm going to want is I'm going to want my image to come in first on the screen and then I'm going to want my text to come in. And then I'm going to want my text to go out first and then my image to go out first. So starting with the logo, I'm going to click on the image here, I'm going to click X. This is just going to kind of let me see that layer exclusively so I can't see the text. We're then going to go into the pan and crop. I'm going to make this window a bit bigger so we can see it. And this is where we can start kind of animating it. So this keyframe here is where I want the image to finally be once it's moved onto screen. If you click and drag on a keyframe, you can move it anywhere on the screen. I'm going to move it to about one second. Because after about one second, I want it to be on screen. We can do some adjustments later to get the timings right, but for now, I'm just going to move that ahead. Then at the very start of the keyframe timeline, you want to make sure this little cursor is all the way at the beginning, like so. And you want to set the crop to where you want the image to start. Because I want my image to come from the side of the screen, I'm going to move my box to the right. Because I'm moving it to the right, that'll basically mean it's going to start on the left side of the screen, and it's going to come in from the left side of the screen. So if I minimise this a bit, if we click at the very beginning of the timeline, you can see that the image isn't visible. But then if we move one second into the clip, the image is in the middle of the screen. Now I'm going to play this from the beginning. I'm going to hit space when my cursor is at the very beginning of the timeline. This will just let me see if it's worked. It'll play the video. So yeah, you can see it comes in there. I do think the animation's coming in a bit slow. So I'm going to move the second keyframe here just a bit backwards, maybe at like half a second. I'm going to hit play again. That's way better, I prefer that so much more already. Of course we're going to want the image to exit the screen back to where it was. So first of all we're going to click on the second keyframe. We're going to hit Control C which is going to copy the keyframe. And then we're going to go find where we'll want the animation to start for it moving out of the screen. So because I've done half a second here, 
I want to do half a second on this side as well, which just looking at these little lines, I can see it's just too along. So if I start too along from this side, that's there. I'm going to hit Control V, it's going to paste the keyframe, and then that'll be the start point for the animation. We're then going to copy the first keyframe, and then we'll kind of repeat the same thing. We're going to paste it at the very end of the track, and that's where it's going to end. So now if we play the animation from the beginning, or play the clip from the beginning, should I say, we can see it comes in there, it'll stay on the screen for a couple of seconds, and it'll go out. So that's perfect, that's exactly how I want it. Now I'm going to move on to the text, so I'm going to hit X here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trim both clips just a little bit, because like I said before, I want the text to come in after the image has already came in, and then I want it to exit before the image exits. So I'm going to hit X on the Instagram name here, just so I can see that track exclusively. I'm going to repeat the same process. So here we've got our keyframe where we actually want the image to be seen, so I'm going to move that half a second in. Then using the right arrow key, I'm going to set the first keyframe, making sure the cursor is at the beginning of the keyframe timeline. And there we go, so hit and play on this. We can see it flies in like so. And then we we'll want to copy the keyframes to the end. So about half a second before it exits the screen. I'm not being 100% accurate here, it's just an estimate. As long as it's about right, it should be okay. So then hit and play on this. Text comes in, text goes out. So now that's done, I want to check that the Instagram logo and the text kind of look okay. So we already should have the text as the only thing that's shown up on screen. If we then click on the logo and hit X as well, we'll then be able to see that. So starting at the beginning of the clip, hitting play, and we can see there is a slight difference in timing when one goes in and one goes out, which I quite like. Now we're going to hit X on these two again. And then we're going to hit X on the My Instagram text. Now I just want to hit the crop on this to make sure I've got this selected. And we're going to repeat the same process. I'll just speed this up a little bit. So we're putting this here. Then using the right arrow key. Pretty much until this box is out of frame from the text. So I'm going to go just here. And once again, copy this. Copy this. Then we'll hit play. That seems okay. Now if we hit X on the My Instagram text so we can see everything once again, we'll hit play at the very start. And we can see that looks pretty cool. Now the last thing we need to do is render this out so we can put it in any video project we want. To start, I'm just going to create a loop by clicking at the top here and dragging across until I hit the end of the clip. Then I want to click File, Render As. You then want to choose QuickTime 7 as your format, and then choose the 3 megabits option. That's basically the highest bitrate you can get, which means it's going to be the best. The reason we're choosing QuickTime as well is because it will make the video transparent. As you know earlier, we've got that transparent image. We're obviously going to want to put it over videos so we can still see the background of whatever's behind it. So that's why we're choosing this format. So once you've chosen the 3 megabits video, you want to hit Customize Template. You're going to want to increase the frame rate to at least... 30 frames a second or 29.97 this is simply because a lot of youtube videos do have the frame rate of 30 fps if you are using higher frame rates for your videos like 60 fps then choose that you're also going to want to change the frame size to high definition 1920 by 1080 you then want to change the video format to animation the compressed depth to 32 bpp and then you can just hit ok and then you'll see on your templates up here you'll have a slightly edited version of the 3 megabits video setting. That uh, is illustrated by this little asterisk in the brackets here. If you want, you can also star that template for the future if you're gonna make any more sort of animations which have transparent backgrounds. Once you've done that, you wanna choose where you wanna save the files, so just click browse over here. I'm gonna save it here, I'm just gonna call it Instagram animation. Should be a .mov file. Hit save, hit render. Should only take a few seconds with it being a short clip. And as you can see, there we go, it's done. I've just started a new Vegas profile here. I'm going to basically test out if the lower thirds has worked. You want to first import your media. One of them, of course, has to be the actual lower thirds animation. Just here, yeah, Instagram animation.mov. I'm going to click open on that. And then I'm going to import just a random clip just to put in the background as an example. 
Right, so here we go. We've got a random clip here. I'm just gonna open that. This is from my main channel. I'm gonna drop this in and click yes. <clears throat> so you can see this is a video from my main channel of me just talking away. This is unedited, so of course it doesn't have any cutting and stuff. So you want to imagine that you have fully edited a video for your channel or whatever you're making. You then want to add the lower thirds on top of it. You first want to just drag the lower thirds animation onto a new track, as you can see here. Now the first thing that's wrong with this, you'll see it's not actually transparent straight away. You want to click on the media for the animation. You want to right click, properties, go into media, go to alpha channel, pre-multiplied, and then click OK. And you can see it's then transparent. And then to make it an actual lower third, you want to use the pan and crop. You want to adjust the size. So I think that's about the right size, and then I'm going to move it so it's in the bottom corner like so and then if you want you can even save this as a template so I'm going to choose lower thirds click the save button here and then I'm going to close that back down and then if we play from the beginning we should see comes in from the side of the screen and then exit back out and that's pretty much it. That's how you make a lower thirds animation. Of course, there's many, many, many variations of this you can do. You can use templates, which would be a little bit easier and a bit faster to do. You could make your own like this. You could even make better ones. It's, it's completely up to you. It's your channel. It's your, well, it's your whatever you're working on. It's your video. So have fun. Happy editing. Um, and yeah, that's it. So... That is going to be the end of this video. If you did enjoy the video, then please leave a like, comment. This video was a lot longer than my normal videos. I was trying to go through every step as detailed as I could. If there was anything you found confusing, just tell me in the comments below. But that's it. So I'll see you in the next video of whatever I make. Thanks, guys. Bye.